Today we're going to analyze the situation with a guy named Tyler Goodrich. Greg, wants to tell us about the videos we're going to watch. Yeah, so Tyler went missing back in November. Um, we're going to see an interview with his husband where he is addressing the last time he saw him. And thanks to Dana for sending us this video. Marshall Vogel says the night of November 3rd, he and Tyler were watching a movie with their kids. Tyler had picked up a pizza. And then the rest of the night happened. Um, we got into an argument and I ended up calling 911 and Tyler left out of the garage. A few days after this was announced by law enforcement, they, they actually told media that you were no longer cooperating with them, but then a couple of days after that, they, they kind of reversed that and said you were. Um, did that surprise you when you heard that originally? Yes, it, it did surprise me. Law enforcement, we let them search the house. They were, I told them that it was an open door. They can come anytime they want. I do understand that um, the spouse is the first suspect, um, and so I understand them putting that pressure, but um, I'm really glad that we have moved past that. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, just a handful of things. All that head shaking is likely due to the negativity of the situation, not a, he's telling you a story and denying it. We hear that all the time, that there's some absolutes. You guys may have a different opinion. I'll listen. There's a non-defiant, chins down, hands locked between his legs when he's talking about the incident and what happened. If we believe what Vray says, that you gesture more with your hands, you, you illustrate more with your hands when something is true, then I would be suspicious there. But baseline matters, so let's see. The interviewer controls the sound in here, which is kind of an awkward thing for us because there's a very pregnant verbal bridge and then. And verbal bridging is simply a way to hide time. Doesn't mean a person's lying. It does mean it gives them room and space. And the more elongated it is, the more opportunity they have to hide time. He doesn't, a mouth groom, which we usually associate with stress. Stress comes from lots of different places. But then he uses a passive voice and he says, the night happened. When you're the questioner, you'd sit across and go, give me more details about what you mean by happen. Because when you switch to passive voice, it doesn't make me feel comfortable that something is not being hidden. It's a lot easier. It's blame sharing. It's whatever you want to call it. And between couples, all kinds of this stuff happens. There was apparently a 911 call. Uh, and he, then he does a narrowing of his mouth and a set jaw, as he said, as she's saying, as the interviewer is saying, law enforcement said you were not cooperating. He purses his lips in disapproval. And then the question I have in this, when I see a person who's just lost their spouse, I expect a little grief, a little concern, a little something in the forehead. So I want to watch the muscles of his forehead moving from here very closely because either he is not expressing grief, he's not expressing concern, or he's not capable. We'll know in a couple of videos as we work through this. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, agree. Uh, indeterminate head moving, I would call that, which means like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. And the only negative about that for me is, well, if if there's a clear story being told here, it should be some clearer head movement and it's indeterminate. But, you know, all I can take from that is I don't quite know what's going on here. Um, the big problem for me is Tyler leaving out in the rough, I think he's talking about talking about and the footage that we see there now i don't know whether that's the footage of him running out into the rough i mean i just don't know but he's what whoever this is is running out that doesn't seem like leaving that's that's running i simply go so what are you running from you've got some maybe police yeah maybe police maybe police maybe if that's, he says, you know, I called 911 and then Tyler left out. He doesn't say and Tyler ran off, you know, into the rough or out through the rough at that point. It's an odd run. There seems to be some kind of uh, one leg not operating quite like the other. That could be an old injury or a, or just the way the person runs. I don't know. And there's a uh, something that's that's lighting up in the hand there. Is that a, is that a, a phone light on or the phone on or a torch or I don't know. But it's an interesting it's an interesting run giving the description of what happened, which is somebody just leaving. So I don't know what's going on at this point. Scott, what do you think? What do you got? When he says uh, at the top there, and the rest of the night happened, I thought that was odd. I've never heard anybody say that before, and the rest of the night happened. 
And then the first half of the video, his voice is a little bit higher because he's under a lot of stress. So your vocal cords constrict a little bit, your throat gets a little bit tighter, and your voice goes up as your as your chest gets tighter and the air is, is pushed out faster. Uh, and, and, and it's kind of weak, and he's being very careful with what he says. Now, you don't call 911 because you're arguing, so there must have been some kind of balance there. Somebody was afraid to somebody. And we see whoever it was that's running, it does look like there's a limp in that. I, I actually put it through one of those little AI things to see if I could clean it up, and it's it, it's you still can't see anymore. You can see mm -hmm. there; it's pretty much the same thing. Um, but the behavior here looks questionable to me. I could it, it could be totally fine, but what we do is we tell you about the behavior we're seeing, and that's what I'm seeing. I see some some odd behavior and heard a couple of, of odd things. Chase, what about you? So I always, first thing I always do is what's missing and what's out of place. That's it. I just look for those things right away. That's the first thing. So what's missing here mostly is grief and some kind of uh, emotion, some kind of emotional reaction to the leaving the story or any of that. And w the thing that's out of place here is fear. Fear should not be here. We see the humerus, this bone right here, sticks into our torso when we get afraid so we can protect our brachial artery. This is not a conscious process that we do. It's very unconscious. The shoulder's kind of coming up. And we're also seeing a, a fear response when he's doing these confirmation glances back and forth to make sure that people are understanding or nodding along to his story. Uh, so we're seeing several, a large cluster of fear behaviors, and that's something that's out of place. So not saying anybody's guilty, but uh, definitely something is off here. Uh, there may be something being withheld. One of those tape replays. Marshall Vogel says the night of November 3rd, he and Tyler were watching a movie with their kids. Tyler had picked up a pizza. And then the rest of the night happened. Um, we got into an argument and I ended up calling 911 and Tyler left out of the garage. A few days after this was announced by law enforcement, they, they actually told media that you were no longer cooperating with them, but then a couple of days after that, they, they kind of reversed that and said you were. Um, did that surprise you when you heard that originally? Yes, it, it did surprise me. Law enforcement, we let them search the house. They were, I told them that it was an open door. They can come anytime they want. I do understand that um, the spouse is the first suspect, um, and so I understand them putting that pressure, but um, I'm really glad that we have moved past that. Marshall says it's been tough to see the speculations running rampant online for himself and also for his family, which includes two teenage boys that he and Tyler adopted. Seeing my family um, be hurt by some of the stuff online, it's been, it's been terrible. Where do you think he went when he left? I have no, I, I just have no idea. We just need to, we need Tyler to come home. It's been 47 days now since he went missing. And there's been no pings to his phone. There's been no charges on a credit card. Do you believe Tyler is still alive? I, I refuse not to. <laughs> he needs to come back and be a father to our kids. He's, he's my kid's dad. I'm not going to give up hope. Marshall says he's been trying to stay strong for his kids. Okay, Mark, what do you got? Yeah. Where do you think he went? I think I see contempt and dis or disdain there. Uh, you know, one side of the mouth goes up. It's very quick. You have to slow that down to catch that that frame. But it, it's there for me. Why? Where do you think he went? Like, why contempt or disdain at that point? Um, we get uh, a single a single eyebrow raise as well around that. That's out of what we were seeing before or what we see later. There's uh, eye block with the lids going down at that point as well. So not looking at us. Those are that's a cluster for me. Only three, but it's 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 interesting. 
But then against that, we are getting a double double shoulder shrug, which could easily be, hey, how do I, you know, what are you going to do? How do I know? I don't know. I'm not I'm not his keeper. Uh, so which which even if that's the case, you're going, why why aren't you his keeper? Why the you know, who can who can tell? Um so I'm I'm a little bit concerned, but there is something that plays against that in some way of that double shoulder shrug, which we may see, I think, a couple of uh times. Uh Chase, what did you see on this one? Yeah, we've we've done hundreds of these by now. This doesn't look like the others. And it doesn't look like uh, all the research that's been done, the scientific research that's been done on this. And the, the behaviors that we're typically looking for is that a desire for the person to come back or a desire for them to be found takes the lead. Uh, and it looks like something's being withheld. It looks like information is being withheld. And I, I won't go any further than that. That's all I'll say. Greg? Yeah, a couple of things. If I were a police officer talking to this guy, I would be very interested because there are a handful of flags that would make me go after. Now, Chase, to your point, if they hate each other and this guy disappeared, right? Eh, you probably would have a different approach than if you truly love each other and you wanted the person to come back. Which Sometimes could, be, you can love could be something that's being withheld. Totally. That could be. But let's start off by looking at we get concern at the brow right off, but it's not about the guy. It's about the family. He, when he says, when he was talking about Tyler, we didn't see any concern, nothing in the brow. When he starts talking about his family, you see it about the pain that's caused to the family. Now this guy's missing, unless you just really hate him and hope he never comes back, kind of a weird thing. And Mark, I saw a single shoulder very quickly and I saw this disdain you saw as well, mm -hmm. very clearly there. And then we, we need you and we need you to come home. We need you to come home. Not I need you to come home. There's a mantra. There's something very different from the way the tone and everything else he said. This is something you wanted to say. And that's followed by what looks a little bit like contempt to me when one side of his face rises from the angle we're at. There's grief and there's sorrow at I refuse not to. His pu you know, his, his points of his brows rise and he puts arch. So that's good. But police are going to crawl this behavior because it's not that about the person, nothing about the person so far. And then the, the last one is he doesn't have any, he speaks not at all about the person, but about the role. He's father, my children, and he, we need him back here. I would try to prove myself wrong with questioning, but this doesn't, this does not look good to me. This is just changed to a mantra statement about him needing to come back and that kind of stuff. And no missing, no grief, none of that associated with the person, more about the family. Scott, what do you got? Yeah. The only time he uses Tyler's name is when he says we need Tyler to come home. And so like Chase is always talking about, you want to, you want to hear their name. You want to hear them saying, please come home, look down the can right down the barrel and saying, if you know anything, about this if you think you've seen something please call the police and be fairly emotional ab about all that we're seeing several short shoulder shrugs and those single shoulder shrugs we see a couple of those and one actually where the chin goes through the goes to the shoulder and, and for me personally i always see that or see that as a deceptive cue um and he says um he's my kid's dad and he needs to come home he doesn't say he's, he's the father of our children he says he's the the, the the father of my kid, he's my kid's dad. So that, the, and my children. So it's, it seems to be all about him, but you never know. This guy could just, could be distraught and this is his way of handling it. Who knows? Um, but, but he's still under the impression Tyler is still alive. I did think that was odd when he was running, running down that, that wherever he's running from. And he said, I forgot to mention that he said he left through the basement why would you add that? Leave it to the basement. Apparently, somebody's leaving through the basement. You know, whether it's him or not, you know, we don't know. Nobody knows. Or maybe they know. I don't know. I don't know. So, I don't know. It's it's looking a little bit iffy for me. It Scott, just doesn't. Yeah, can man. you break down what the single shrug uh, actually means? Yeah, good call. Okay. Well, quite often when we see a single shoulder shrug, a normal shoulder shrug should last about a second, second and a half like that. You know, I have no idea what you're talking about. But if you see a really quick one like that, when the two of them, both shoulders go up, that lets us know, that suggests that that, that person isn't confident with the answer. And if the, we see just the one, quite often that lets us know they, I would I would think they for sure aren't, 
aren't positive or aren't, aren't confident with that answer. But in my experience, and it was pointed out, like I always say, it was pointed out by Joe Navarro, that when someone's shoulder goes up a, a real quick shoulder shrug like that, and that chin goes toward it, quite often that person's being deceptive. So I think he may not have done something to, to Tyler, but I think he, maybe he was, goes back to what I was saying earlier about you don't call the cops just because you're fighting. Something's got to be going on. So maybe he's hiding the violence part of it and, you know, say, yeah, we may, we was a knockdown drag out because it's two pretty big dudes, you know, not giant, but they, they look healthy like they could do some, you know, they could fight each other fairly well. So maybe he's leaving out the violence part and that's the, the, the guilt or whatever we're seeing. Looks like he's hiding some. One of those tape replays. But Marshall says it's been tough to see the speculations running rampant online for himself and also for his family, which includes two teenage boys that he and Tyler adopted. Seeing my family um, be hurt by some of the stuff online, it's been, it's been terrible. Where do you think he went when he left? I have no, I, I just have no idea. We just need to, we need Tyler to come home. It's been 47 days now since he went missing. And there's been no pings to his phone. There's been no charges on a credit card. Do you believe Tyler is still alive? I, I refuse not to. <laughs> he needs to come back and be a father to our kids. He's, he's my kid's dad. I'm not going to give up hope. Marshall says he's been trying to stay strong for his kids. Life doesn't stop, um, even though it feels like it it just happened. It, it feels like November 4th, November, th you know, the next day. Um, but we still have parent-teacher conferences and finals and just our day to day. And so that has helped me um, just keep them moving forward because life, life still is going on even though I'm, it stopped for me. I keep thinking Tyler would know that's exactly what I would do is make sure the boys are okay. Marshall hasn't been out to search for Tyler. He says he thought it was very important to stay close to their kids to help them cope, but he has been helping when he can. He ordered safety vests for those who were out, and he says he's grateful for people searching. All of the volunteers and friends and family and everyone helping get this message out. Um, it's, been, it's been amazing to see Lincoln come together. I asked Marshall if Tyler is out there somewhere and sees this on TV or social media, what would he want to tell him? That there are so many people that love you and just call your dad. All right, Chase, what do you got? One thing that we see in human beings, I know y'all are going to break his behavior down quite a bit, but when we see a human who's attached to another human in any way, any kind of relationship, and I think this is the his attorney sitting beside him, is that when a human being is feeling true feelings of truth and empathy for another, you're going to see those emotions reflected on that person who's sitting with them. And so far, we have seen zero reflected emotion there on that attorney, like he's feeling empathetic or sympathetic. And I don't think that attorney uh, is is incapable of feeling those things. I, I think maybe he knows something. Maybe there's something there that's making him just put this wall between him and the other person that he should feel some kind of what we call emotional resonance for. And there is no emotional resonance there. And I thought that was odd. Scott? All right. He says, just call your dad. For me, that was odd. Just call your dad. Why not call me? Look again, down the barrel of the camera. Look, man, I know we were fussing. I know we were fighting. It got ugly. But seriously, call me. Let's cut, let's cut this out. There's no breakthrough to that. 
Some, something's up because you don't call the cops just when you're fussing. It got, I, I think they were swinging at each other. Um, so it must have been a heck of a fight for him to say, call his dad and not him. So I think he may still harbor some feelings of, of anger toward him. We don't know what the relationship is. I mean, relationships are, are odd. And as for not searching for him a little bit, and that's not right, man. You'd be out there, right? Any of us, if our person was missing, you don't think we'd be, they'd have to tell us, look, man, you got to go to bed, dude. You're, you're, you're talking weird now. You're, you're seeing the dinosaurs. You got to get, you got to go in and get some sleep. That's the way we would be. That's the way most of you watching this would be. You'd be out there looking. Now, having said that, it could be a situation where he's just not good at that and can't go out. And I've seen people when, when situations come up and you think that's easy to handle, they can't handle it. They don't know what to do. They don't feel comfortable doing that for whatever reason. And they're just not the person to do it. So that could be it. But it sure doesn't look like it because so many things seem to be going uh, from the, the deceptive road on this, all the shoulder shrugs. And we don't really see, and, and the sniffing, we're not seeing any snot come out. We just hear him sniffing. We don't see any tears to the end there. That really bothered me because he sounds like he's upset. He sounds like he's crying, but he's not crying yet. But he does there at the end. Uh, I, I think you'll probably deal with that, Greg. But something's not right here. And as this guy ran off in shorts and he's limping, if that was him and he hasn't used his phone or his credit card or anything like that, it's going it to, that doesn't sound good at all for the possibility of him coming back. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, a couple of things. Remembering that I think the police have now said he isn't a suspect, the, the husband isn't a suspect. However, remember I said in the beginning, I'm looking for grief, but maybe his forehead isn't capable of that. Maybe he's Botox. Or, it's not. Because if you watch him here, he's talking about normal life. His forehead's engaged. He's moving his brow. So why not? Why nothing? Why no grief? Why no concern when he's talking about this guy at all? Don't know. All I know is that that stands out to me and it would get my attention and I would crawl him. I mean, this would be a rough questioning session because I would be all on him, not giving him anywhere to go. There's real cry avoidance at one point where he does that eye upward left eye yeah. accessing. A lot of people use that to control crime. So that looks good. There's a lot of hand movement when he's talking about day to day and not much when he's talking about what happened that night. Again, that makes me uncomfortable. A lot of this, Scott, when he's talking about him, where he does the chin moving and that. Mm -hmm. And there's not the call for come back to me, come back here. If I did not see this video and did not see all the forehead involvement, I would not feel as worried, worried is a strong word, as concerned in the first video. But when I see this and then I wonder where's all the grief, where's any concern, I just don't see it. Mark, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, just to reiterate, people, really, look, Chase, good call on no emotional contagion there. The reason, part of the reasons for heightened emotions right. is they affect other people very, very quickly. So you get the result that you need out of the environment because they're feeling it as well and they're, they're ramped up into action. Yeah, we're not seeing anything from the person, you know, feet away, you know, fractions of a foot away. That's interesting. Now, look, at the same time, you could go, you could go, look, guy's doing a job of some sort or, you know, he, he these kind of things don't affect him as much as others. So, look, there's always things which are reasonable, but we don't see that. We don't see it that often, you know, in, in the main. So I think there's that. Uh, it is interesting that we don't get the, a look down the camera to to Tyler, um, but but that could have been a directorial thing. You know, he he doesn't know that he can do that, and nobody said, look, just look down the camera and just you know tell Tyler what he needs to to do. Um, but it's interesting that it's not his instinct to go down the lens of the camera and deliver it down the camera. Now, at the same time, it doesn't seem to be his instinct to get out there and look. It seems to be his instinct to stay with the kids. Like, I get both. Maybe he's the kind of person that says, look, I'm really good at looking after the kids. I think I'll fail 
at that. That wouldn't be me. I'd be like, everybody else is going to mess this one up. I will look better than anybody else. I'll have an instinct for where, you know, where my partner would be. Um, like, I got to get out there and I'd be straight on the blower going, look, you, you got to get over here, look after the kids because I got to get out there because otherwise, you know, she won't be found. I, I got to get out there. But, you know, you could that that's the way I would respond. You know, is it reasonable for him to respond like this? I've not seen it a lot. I've not seen it a lot, but it still it still has some edges of reason in here. Life doesn't stop, um, even though it feels like it. It just happened. It, it feels like November 4th, November, you know, the next day. Um, but we still have parent teacher conferences and finals and just our day to day. And so that has helped me um, just keep them moving forward because life, life still is going on even though I'm, it stopped for me. I keep thinking Tyler would know that's exactly what I would do is make sure the boys are okay. Marshall hasn't been out to search for Tyler. He says he thought it was very important to stay close to their kids to help them cope, but he has been helping when he can. He ordered safety vests for those who were out, and he says he's grateful for people searching. All of the volunteers and friends and family and everyone helping get this message out. Um, it's, been, it's been amazing to see Lincoln come together. I asked Marshall if Tyler is out there somewhere and sees this on TV or social media, what would he want to tell him? That there are so many people that love you and just call your dad. <laughs> yeah, just call your dad. Just one more thing. All right, Mark, how's it looking to you? Looking like there's a good chance that somebody here is is softening or not telling us the severity of what actually went on here. There's some reasonable reasons for that, I think, in that, you know, maybe doesn't want to say that information to be out in front of the kids. Um, uh, no, you know, do I think there's somebody responsible there? I, I actually just don't know. But I think there's somebody there who in this particular interview is not telling us everything that they could, but maybe they shouldn't at this point. So, uh, yeah, there's my take on it. Chase, what do you got? None of us are mind readers, nor will we claim to be. And we can't uh, look at behavior and magically say, oh, this is what they're thinking about, or, or they have a, a gray cat when they were 10 years old based on this little facial movement. But... We also, at the same time, try to give people the benefit of doubt and look for truth signals equally as deception or stress or fear and all of that. Uh, it, it, with all of that, it definitely has all of the hallmarks of someone withholding information to me. Greg? Yeah, we always say baseline, baseline, baseline. Fortunately, they asked the third question. The third interview shows a good baseline. Well, I have to go to school and I have to do this and I have to do that. Well, then we can lay that back over the first two videos and we can go back and say, okay, do I see any deviation from that? When I do, in fact, I see less hand movement. We see some single shoulder shrugs. We see no grief. We see no concern. So those things make us want to start asking more questions. Look, I'm with you, Chase. It would be wonderful if there were the guilt muscle right there that popped in anytime somebody had done something, but we can't see that. Add to that that he goes kind of down the well in that last video when he starts to cry, but we don't see a lot of physiological crying. We just hear crying. It makes me feel uncomfortable enough that I would crawl and ask a ton of questions before I would rule them out. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I agree. I agree. We're seeing a whole lot of, of behavior in there, but is it the right behavior? Is that what are we seeing right. what we should be seeing? So it, it doesn't look like it to me anyway. And I feel like you guys may feel that way as well. So this, you know, shoot, obviously it could go either way, but it just doesn't look right. 
because, but that could be because he's hiding stuff because they were being violent. Something so else, that, right? Yeah, it could be some completely Agreed. different. We're seeing him be deceptive about, and it could it might not be because he's the one responsible for it, for Tyler not coming back. So let's let's keep that in mind because that's that's iffy, and I'm sure this guy is just you know, if he's if everything's cool, then he's a wreck right now, you know. Yeah. So, all right. And let's all hope hopefully. to God those kids get uh, <clears throat> get him back home. Dad. Mm -hmm, yeah. For sure. Guys, the phone number, and you saw it in the video, but the phone number is 402-441-6500. We'll put it down below. If you know anything and you can help get this guy home, make this family back together, please do it. Mm -hmm. All right, fellas. We'll see you next time.